How y'all doing? My name is Turtel Only. We're at the site of the 13th Black Age of Comics Convention in Chicago. The Black Age is a movement that was started back in the 80s, early 80s actually, by myself. The comic book industry is put together in a sequence of ages. In the beginning it was called the Golden Age, then after that was the Silver Age, and believe it or not they had something called the Bronze Age. So I thought if you were doing comic books that came from a black or African, urbane, or even independent perspective, that would put you in the black age. We're expanding the industry. Okay, the industry for decades, for whatever reasons, was resistant or didn't allow for, maybe we didn't organize it in terms of di true diversity. I mean, imagine Western music, music in America, if black people never delivered an influence in the industry. You know, we got black age greats here like Eric Battle, Stephen Harris, Ashley Woods, Andre Batts. Okay, you have a variety of people. Mark Moran, you have Elaine Odom, Ari Monroe, okay, uh, Afua Richardson, all right? I'm naming names. Find those people, okay? They're truly stars at a, at a level that will go beyond your imagination. Hello, my name is L.A. Banks, and I have the Vampire Hunters Legend series, as well as the Crimson Moon Werewolf series. My main character, Damali Richards, she's a hip-hop spoken word artist. She's not a vampire, she fights vampires, and the family that she's with, they fight evil. So her whole family, her mother seer, her, uh, uh, I guess, mentor Shabazz, and all the other male characters that are around her, they are her guardians, and they protect her as she learns how to fight, and she learns how to, to go against evil and going against vampires. My name is Andre Batts, creator of Urban Style Comics. I've been doing comics approximately, uh, so I'll say 14 years, since 96. And Dreadlocks is the first character that I created. I grew up reading different Marvel comics. Most of the comic books that I bought were European or Caucasian based. Uh, the only black characters that were out back then was Luke Cage, uh, Black Panther, Black Falcon, characters of that nature, but they were very weak. So when I got older and became an adult and I had the financial means or whatever, I decided to create a character that represented us because even though they have a few black characters out there in the mainstream comic books, they don't have any substance behind it for the most part. So with dreadlocks, you know, I can add substance to it and put it out there because we're still not represented in the comic book industry as a whole. Now, if you look at comic books historically, black people really don't show up in comic books till 1960 or after. Now, now, comic book historians will say, well, yeah, there were some black heroes and black comics, but they didn't last during the 20s or 30s because they were black publishers. They didn't have the money. So, white artists and writers didn't see really any need to create black characters unless they, you know, they were mush mouth characters or, you know, comic relief. And then when we finally started spending money as consumers on comic books like in the 60s and so forth, they said, well, we better get some black heroes out here. I've got the Harlem Shadow coming out of the Harlem Renaissance. Lucius Hammer, if you look at the first page of Lucius Hammer, I'm suggesting slightly that John Henry from American folklore is his illegitimate father, you know. I mean, they have mythology, we have mythology too, but we have to create it. Kids are buying, they're buying everything. We got kids to come in the store to buy Archie books. We got kids to coming in the, into the store to buy Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, it's, it's more the, like, the more the maybe the the younger, the books that are made for like younger kids, like maybe kids of this age. Um, they're they're just buying what they want to read. They're not. I don't think they're necessarily coming in there specifically to find uh, African American characters. Uh, what I read, I look for comics as. Um, mostly in the mainstream media and also underground comics it's like um, I believe that there's a lot of African American artists and they characters that's not really put out there like they should be and there's a lot of them getting ripped off by the main media and so I really look for the underground well they are getting into it because we're giving them the opportunity we have in the conventions I wish they would demand it more they should go into their local stores and say you know I want a different product you know because the more books we can sell 
the more people we can hire. This is as much about economics as it is about morality. This is as much about uh, literacy and reading and conflict resolution as it is about uh, being artistic. So it's all connected.